Stars have always been considered from a romantic and poetic perspective. They make humans wonder about their destiny since from prehistory. As a matter of fact, cavemen understood periodic cycles and depicted them in a symbolic way in the worldwide known Lascaux Caverns. Maybe the main reason why stars are so loved and admired by us is their shining beauty that seems totally unattainable. It's like something that can't be reached. Hundreds of tales and myths revolve around the possibility of getting near these bright and mysterious objects in space. As an example, think about the story of Icarus, who died in his existential flight to the sun. Moreover, even the history of society is full of events linked to space missions that will always be seen like something memorable. Think about the launch of Sputnik in 1957 or the first human step on the moon made by Armstrong in 1969. Two incredible events that will never be forgotten. Even the remote possibility of getting a bit closer to the stars will always make us feel amazed and emotionally touched. But how far are the stars? Are they really so distant from us? And how can we measure such tremendous distances? Are there any valid techniques? A lot of surprising things can be said about these questions. Do you want to know more about it? Stick with me and I'll tell you everything in just a moment. Is it possible to calculate star distances? Definitely yes, but some further explanations must be clarified. Obviously, we can't measure such a huge gap with normal methods we're used to on Earth. We have to calculate in an indirect way. What does it mean? We need to measure two different quantities that are related to each other through distance. Then, with a simple equation, we can easily derive how far the star is from us. Let's make an example. If we want to measure how many kilometers there are between two cities, we can drive at a constant velocity and measure directly how much time the journey takes. After that, we can just get the information about the distance. Similarly, Physicists utilize the different types of brightness of a star that depend on distance to know how far the star actually is. Before going on more rigorously on this subject, we must list the major units of measure used to identify the distance of a star. The first one is the astronomical unit, which is exactly the gap that separates Earth from the Sun, corresponding to 10 to the 11th power meters or 8 minutes at the speed of light. The other one is parsec, nearly around 10 to the 16th power meters or 3.26 light years, which represents the distance that causes a change of one degree in the sky over an entire year. This phenomenon is also known as parallax, but we'll discuss that later. In order to understand the major techniques used in astronomical researches, we need to take a little step back and define some of the important physical quantities. The first one is absolute luminosity which is the radiation power of a light-emitting object. Consider it the measurement of its brightness. A small lamp has a lower luminosity than a lighthouse. Moreover, we can define another quantity that derives by the previous one and it's named apparent luminosity. It's proportional to the inverse of square distance. Shortly, apparent luminosity is higher when the star is closer and vice versa. A lighthouse certainly is brighter than a lamp, but if it's 10 or 20 times more distant than the lamp, the lamp is going to seem to have greater power. Apparent luminosity is sort of a superficial density of power. In parallel, physicists defined apparent magnitude, which is greater when luminosity is lower and smaller when luminosity is higher. As a matter of fact, the brightest star visible from Earth, which is known as Vega, has a conventional value of zero. Obviously, it's dependent on distance and can be considered as an equivalent of apparent luminosity. In addition, another quantity called absolute magnitude has been introduced by scientists. It measures the magnitude that all stars would have at a distance of 10 parasec. Just like what we did before with velocity and time, astronomers usually utilize absolute and apparent magnitude to derive distance. Since apparent magnitude can be measured through telescope observations, it's necessary to find objects that have a well-known absolute magnitude. These stars or galaxy are also called standard candles, and they're crucial for measuring distances of stars. The first object that's very useful for this method is Cepheid. 
Its major characteristics is the emission of its electromagnetic waves. Its intensity varies with time according to specific laws. Consequently, these stars are also known as variable Cepheids, which turn to be a crucial feature for the measurement of star distances. Why is the radiation of Cepheids so important? Because, by measuring the pulsation, it's possible to derive the true luminosity and magnitude of the star. This is the main reason why Cepheids are important indicators of cosmic benchmarks for scaling galactic and extragalactic distances. This robust characteristic of classical Cepheids was discovered in 1908 by Henrietta Swan Leavitt. After studying thousands of variable stars in the Magellanic Clouds, this discovery allows one to know the distance of a star from the relation between observed brightness and true luminosity, given by the measurement of the variable emission. How far can we find star distances thanks to this method? Around 1 kpc. Just the closest ones can be detected using Cepheids as standard candles. As opposed to this technique, there's even another way of revealing star distances. At this scale, just by using geometric properties. Did you know that? Its name is Parallax. Before finding out more about this, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell icon so you know you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Parallax is probably the most famous method for measuring star distances. Practically, it's based on the displacement of the observed object related to a change of position of the observer. Does it seem difficult? Let's try to make it simple. Try to position one finger near your face and observe it closing the left eye. Now, close the right one and watch the finger with the left. Did you notice something? The finger has slightly changed position. Why does that happen? Because we're observing the object from a different point in space. The same effect can be observed with the stars. Their coordinates in space undergo some small changes as the Earth changes position orbiting around the Sun. How can we measure distance through this technique? By knowing the change of position of the observer and measuring the angular displacement of a star in the sky, we can easily derive the distance using some simple trigonomic laws. The definition of the unit parasec is derivable by this technique. One parasec is the distance that is necessary for observing a parallax with one degree of angular displacement in the sky. Parallax can give information of distances lower than 500 parasec. Therefore, there are some different kinds of techniques that are used according to the scale of the length we want to measure. Firstly, this type of parallax we just described, which is totally based on Earth proper motion, is called trigonometric, and it's perfect for deriving distances under the limit of 200 parasec. Secondly, a new type of parallax known as secular was introduced to reach the enormous distance of 500 parasec. Why is it different from the previous one? It exploits the proper motion of the sun relatively due to the displacement of the star in the sky. Finally, the statistic parallax has been developed in the range of 500 parasec. It's based on the hypothesis that a group of stars is almost at the same distance on the Earth and focuses on calculating the relative movement of the group comparatively to that of the observed star. However, if we want to move our research further, we need to use other methods in order to detect star distances. The principle is the same as Cepheids, exploiting the properties of a standard candle with known true luminosity. Some great candidates for this role are supernova type IA. What are they? Supernova are terrible explosions which vary in high energy, some of the most powerful events in the entire universe. Where do they originate from? They're caused by the implosion of massive stars. In a previous video on this channel, we've gone through the evolution of different types of stars. Primarily, the life of a star is based on its mass. If it's relatively small, like less than eight times that of our sun, the star will actually last more time as the fuel that propels the energy, which is the nuclear fusion that happens in the center, will be used at a slower rate. On the other hand, if a star is massive, its life will be much shorter since it consumes nuclear energy at a higher rate. A simple comparison can be made with cars. A Ferrari is going to finish its fuel before that little Fiat because its engine is way more powerful. According to that, 
a massive star at the end of its life when the nuclear fusion is stopped because there's no more energy available will implode, and then explode with an enormous amount of energy, and that's called a supernova. However, sometimes even smaller stars like our sun, which usually turn into a white dwarf at the end of their cycle, small and ultra-dense objects with a relative low temperature, can cause a particular kind of event known as a supernova type IA. These explosions have an absolute known magnitude, and its apparent luminosity can be measured through telescopes of different wavelengths, providing us with the distance from our Earth. Although they can be used with a wide range of distances, that can even reach the tremendous values of billions of light years, almost one gigaparasec. These types of events are rarely observed. Another important technique for measuring star distances is the Hubble Law. Discovered by Edwin Hubble in 1929, it's one of the most famous laws of astronomy. It states that the faster the star or galaxy recedes from us, the greater its distance. Distance and velocity have a linear relation through a constant called Hubble constant. That was initially calculated with a very low precision by the astronomer. But wait a moment. We have just changed the problem. How can we measure the velocity of a star? Although it seems very difficult, physicists have elaborated a very good method to reach this goal. Usually, they analyze the spectrum of an object, which is like a catalog of the different wavelengths emitted by the star. If some gas of the stellar or galactic atmosphere is poisoned between our telescope and the star, it's going to absorb light at specific lengths depending on the elements of the atmosphere. These cause some black lines in the spectrum, and scientists have calculated the value of wavelengths of each single element. If a galaxy recedes from us, the light waves will be partially stretched due to the famous Doppler effect, the same that make the alarm of an ambulance change in frequency if it's reaching us or going away. We'll have greater wavelengths, translated towards red. This phenomenon is called redshift. The measurement of the displacement of the absorption lines towards red gives us the velocity of the stars and consequently its distance, thanks to the Hubble law. Therefore, further studies have proven that the redshift is not caused by the movement of the galaxies, but by the expansion of the universe itself. They are not moving relatively to us. It's the space-time that's stretching and growing the relative distance from Earth and other galaxies. In conclusion, we've seen here that just little changes in some well-known quantities as the position of a star in the sky or a color of a light wave can surprisingly give us such precious information about the distance of a star or a galaxy. It's really incredible how powerful science can be. This video ends here. Thanks for watching everyone. Did you find this topic exciting? Are you amazed by the possibility of measuring indirectly star distances? What's your favorite technique? Did you know all of them? Is there anything more you want to hear about star distances? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time on the channel.